Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 and today I'm going to be giving you part 13 of what if Naruto Dream to surpass the gods. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual, share this to all of your friends via social media platform and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto. Was a sealed master with Yosuke Byakugan over Anime King and enjoy that guys. And on Anime King 2 I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto. Got special training as a child so go ahead and enjoy that guys. And remember for new year yes, I indeed have 3 channels. Anime King, Anime King 2 and Anime King 3. Which I post what if on every single day. Yes you heard that correctly. Every single day for you guys to enjoy so go ahead. Click that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last spot we left off. Jiraiya and Naruto return back to the village hidden within a leaf. As Naruto glanced over the village, much had not changed however there was Sinadi face in the statue now. As Ino and Shikamaru and Choji were at Choji barbecue restaurant Jack, as they were talking they knew that something was up regarding what happened between Naruto and Ino however they did not know the exact details but they rarely talk about Naruto when Ino was around. But still she didn't seem to be having a problem with it in fact. She was grateful of his accomplishments as they were happy about that. So with that Naruto and Jiraiya went towards the tower. As Nadi saw how much he has grown she couldn't believe it. He has really grown a lot. As she talked about his training. However Jiraiya told her that it would be a waste of time for him to be fighting a ninja within Kanoha. As they wouldn't win either way. Snadi was surprised that Jiraiya would say something like that, as he had such confidence within Naruto's skills. However, when she heard that Naruto defeat Jiraiya, that was the breaking point that she knew that he has really achieved what he wanted to achieve. However, Naruto said that he was not finished. There was someone in the village that he wasn't sure he could beat if they were to go all out even though the process would kill them. And that was my guy along with the eight gates. So with that, Snadi decided to give him some time off to reinvent himself in the village, like how he's back. The people that knew that he now contained the Kayubi did not see it as a problem after all. He was holding the beast back because he had not shown any signs of any distrust towards him so the people were grateful and not to mention his achievements put him above that any hatred or glares that anyone might even think of. However Sakura and Ino came to the office being the apprentice of Snedi. It became rather tense after Naruto greeted Sakura. However, he greeted Inu as well. There was no anger, nothing at all. She never expected to have him react in that way. As her mind had been cloudy ever since she heard that he was coming back. And she had been thinking a lot. However, he was just so nice as always. So with that, he made his way. As he ran into Shikamaru and Tamari as he greeted the both of them. As he went to greet a few more people until he returned back home. Upon returning back home, he found... Suki was already there waiting for him, as she had reached the dream that she always wanted to reach, as she would be the first female commander. As she had waited a long time for this and trained hard, and Naruto was, well, happy for her. As Naruto decided to go in the village greeting by the few people that he hadn't seen in a long while, as he was a lot, and his commander as well, Wolf. However, it changed when the Akasuki attack. A team made up of Naruto, Ino, Sakura and Kakashi was sent to track them down. Guy's team was in the vicinity so they were sent a message on this. So with that they made their way. Guy's team was out there as they were making their way back. 
but it would take a long while if they were to rush straight back. However, Naruto and his team made the way to the sun. Ino and Sakura got to work, as Naruto promised Tamari that they would get Gara back. He had Pokon brought one of his three prompt kunais, however, Zetsu took note of that and decided to plant it near a falling edge. So when the time was ready for Pokon to come back and Naruto teleport them there, they all fell. As let us say that they were all scared out of their mind. However, Naruto teleported them back towards the grass vicinity. Shocked that Pokon would put his kunai there. It seems like one of the Akasuki members must have moved it though after Pokon explained when Kakashi summoned him. So they had to move by foot. Guy's team ran into Kisame who tried to hold them off while Naruto's team ran into Itachi. Itachi did not stand a chance as Naruto was not here to waste time. When they arrived towards the scene, Guy's team caught up. They split apart, Guy's team moving as they used Ninja's Byakun to find the areas. Once they did, Guy's team removed the papers as Sakura and Ino crushed the boulder as Naruto's team moved in. However, Naruto saw what was happening really fast as he made quick work of taking Gara out of that absorbing process. The last few remaining chakra of Shikaku was still residing within Gara, not enough to reform Shikaku consciousness but enough to keep Gara alive as Sakura and Ino start to work on him immediately to stabilize his chakra systems so they would not erupt and end up killing him. As Naruto then moved after entering Sage mode, Deidara didn't expect what was about to happen as Naruto shoved a Rasengan deep in his mouth, blowing his head clean off. He then proceeded to go on the onslaught on Sasori. Kakashi wanted to interfere however Naruto leave no room for him to do that. Sasori summoned his hundred puppets after he realized why the leader had told him to run if they had run into this person. As Naruto created a Rasengan shuriken that was so massive, the ears start to be warped and twist as he launched the attack forcing the puppets to be demolished as he erased them from existence. He then went on the onslaught against Sasori as he took out the third Kazakage puppet and proceeded to crush. Sasori with his sage enhanced punches he was able to find the weak spot by using his sage senses. As he found the chakra in that thing on his chest, as he proceeded to seal it off, Sasori was unable to pump chakra through the rest of his body and thus he became unable to move, paralyzed completely. Naruto dragged his broken body back to Chiyu as she wanted to say her farewells he believed after all she was his grandmother. And Naruto actually cared about family so, a Kasuke member or not she should say her farewells. However Sasha would still be destroyed by his hands, as he was just giving her a sense of relief, knowing that Sasha is gonna die. So yeah guys, basically as we left off you guys can switch across the place for yourself and also guys, Remember to go ahead and check out the other what ifs. Links will be down in the description for anime king and anime king too, guys. And I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. So, without further ado, enjoy. Gara lie in the bed as he was awake. He really thought that he was gonna die after being taken by the Akasuke. After all, when he was informed by Jiraiya Sama and Naruto that the Akasuke were going around taking Jinjulikis for their biju and he knew what would happen if it got extracted from him. That he would definitely die so once he got exploded upon in the cocoon of sand, he thought that was it for his life. However he did what was necessary to protect his village and if he had a choice once again he would do the same. After all he was a leader now and he had to keep his village protected by any means necessary. His thoughts were cut when someone spoke though. You know, I was severely disappointed when I heard that you were taken down by one Akaski member. Gara turned his gaze towards the window as he saw Naruto sitting there. Over the past three years Naruto and Gara had met on few occasions as Naruto was still a Jonin of Kanoha. That meant the missions that Snadi had sent across some of them being a dual mission between Kanoha and the San Naruto's one to complete these missions. They had met on several occasions however the two had this bond that didn't really need words. They had an understanding ever since Naruto had spoke to him and that talk had changed Gara's life for the better and he was rather grateful for that after all if it wasn't for him. Who knows where he would have been right now or what he would be doing if he had not changed or even if he would be alive. As Naruto continued speaking, if it was the two of them in your village I could have understand but still, it shouldn't have been any trouble for you to defeat them. 
You are in a village that is mostly comprised of sand, which you should be able to use quite bountifully. However, I was told about the sacrifice that you made, and I guess I understand, after all. To protect your village is something that every ninja lives by. As Gaurav Alex spoke, and if I have to do it again, I would do it ten times over. I know you would, after all. That is the responsibility of Akagi, to make sure that your people are safe, even if it means risking your life. You know, said Gaurav. Over the past few years that I have known you, the more occasions we meet, I know, that you would be a splendid full Kagi as well. Unlike most others, you have the right mindset to make the difficult choices even if it means that some might not like it and not to mention to throw yourself head on in battle even though you know that there's a possibility of death. But even that, you would do whatever it takes to protect your village, even back then. In the invasion of your village. Even now you are one to understand exactly what it means to be a Kagi. I wouldn't be too surprised if the Hokage decided. When she's finally ready to retire that. She would hand the hat over to you. After all it's quite fitting. Said Gara. It seems that the both of us have something in common similarly. To our past. Regarding. The boat of our fathers was the fort. Kagi is of our village. And the both of us now have a similar mindset regarding how to protect our village and what we will give in order to see our village safe. Yes, I guess you're right there. But I'm glad that you're okay, Gara. For one, it wouldn't have been good for the Akaski to take down Akagi, despite them taking what they took from you. Well, I should be the one thanking you, said Gara. After all, you did save my life. Well, you shouldn't worry about that, said Naruto. That is what friends do for one another. Yes. I suppose you're right, said Gara. I haven't seen you in a year and a half. But I know that your training has went bountiful. I've heard your name all over the Elemental Nation. From all sides, from all corners. People have been talking about the Red Flash. And I always knew that it was never an exaggeration after all. I was told what happened by one of your teammates. How you took care of those Akaski members by yourself. Well... I shouldn't be surprised. You are always strong, not just physically though, said Gara. When you aim to be the best, there's no limits to what you can achieve, said Naruto. I was able to check on your seal while the girls were making sure that you are right. They removed most of the Shikaku from inside of you. I doubt that he would ever truly reform, however. Because of my interruption of his sealing process, some of his chakra remain inside of you. And the girls did a wonderful job to keep your coils from expanding too much so you wouldn't die in the process. So you should be fine. Gaara took in a deep breath. Well, it's a lot better now, he said. As his mind was clear. He was able to block out the Shikaku for a long while, however now, the voice was completely gone. Not even a whisper. And it's all thanks to his friend. And for that he was grateful. Time skip. The group was gonna leave tomorrow as Naruto stood on top of the hotel that they were staying in. As the night air in the sand was rather cold, but it wasn't really bothering him. The temperature at Mount Miyaboku could change like that. Sometimes it was freezing cold, sometimes it was hot. And his body got used to such temperature. He glanced down as he saw the several people walking the road. At least the almost death of their Kazakage hadn't thrown them into a panic. As life was getting back to normal. As someone made their way up to the roof beside him. As he turned to see that he was none other than Temari. Hey, I was looking for you, she said. As he glanced towards her. Well, you found me, he said. Well, I came to thank you once again. You did promise that you'd get my brother back. And you did as you said. I guess I should say I'm grateful, she said to him. Twice now you've done something to help. Change and keep this village stable. First by changing my brother and now by saving him. The sand owe you a huge death. There's no need to thank me, said Naruto. Gar is my friend. And friends do whatever they can to help one another. Hey, I don't know if I'm overstepping or something, but... Are you alright, she asks. As Naruto turned towards her. Why would you ask me that? Well, you see... Growing up with Gara, it was rather hard. Expressing myself. As... Calm as I might seem back then, I didn't really have 
friends. I only had Conquer, and Gar never really talked to us. Seeing that he was who he was back then, people chose to stay away from us as much as they could, so I barely had friends. However, things have changed now. However, I always felt this loneliness. And the same way I felt, it's what I'm feeling coming from you. I don't know if I'm imagining this, however, it seems like you're sad. You might look unfazed by most things, however, I can see that you're deeply sad for some reason. Or I might just be mistaken. Are you? She asks. I was once told if you never experience pain, that someone has experienced you cannot truly know that person. That is one of the main reasons why I don't seek to kill Sasuke. Sasuke? She said. He lost so much. He lost his entire family, his mother, his father, and his brother is now an enemy. That is why I don't judge him in a way. However, it seems like you've been this way as well. So, I'm right, she said. I wouldn't say that I'm lonely, said Naruto. However, my mind has been, is it with Eno, she asks. As Naruto paused, as he raised the eyebrow at that. You're quite perceptive, aren't you? Well, you can say that. I've noticed the way she looks at you when you're not looking. And I notice the way that you mainly focus to keep your eyes off her. But sometimes your eyes wander. I asked your other teammate about this. And the way she climbs up and said it was nothing. I know that it was something. Yes, it was, said Naruto. However, that's the past right now. And you can't really change the past. Yeah, that's right. But you can make a new future. And after all you've done for us, the happiness that you've brought me by doing certain actions, I would hate to see you suffer. And you did hear what I said earlier, right? The wandering glances that she sent your way. If something did happen between you two, I doubt that she's over you. As Naruto gave her a look, what's with that look? Well, you're trying to dive a lot into my personal life, so I figure I'd do the same to you. Huh? You barely know a lot about me, she said. Oh, is that so? What about you and Shikamaru? Wh what? She said. Her face turned a bit red. What are you talking about? As Naruto stepped closer, I know you're getting all flustered. It means that something is there. You try to deny it and you try to hide it however I can see it. As Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder, but well, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. After all, he's a good guy. He's a bit lazy, but you seem to like that. After all, you blame him for being lazy, but you kind of enjoy calling him on that, don't you? Come on, you don't have to lie now. After all, I'm just talking to you in a personal manner. She took a breath as she exhaled. Fine. But don't you dare say a word to anyone. Yes. I like to call him on his laziness. So what? As Naruto merely smiled. You're rather smart. You should figure that out. Thanks for the talk, he says. He hopped off the roof. Damn it, she said. He was able to break me apart so quickly. I guess he's skill in every other area as well, she thought to herself. Time skip. The team said their goodbyes to Gara and the other members as they were making their way back home. Sakura did not want to be flashed around with Naruto again. The last time he did it, for one thing, they almost fall off a cliff. The second thing she felt like she was going to throw up, so did Ino. After all, they were not used to the high speed travel, and they were really not in a rush. As both them and Team Guy made their way back to the village, in a calm sedate pace. Lee kept on asking Naruto about the fight, as he wanted to hear Naruto's youthful details. As the members were rather surprised. Taking on two s rank ninjas like it was nothing. It was that they realized how far Naruto was out of their leagues. And it wasn't even a joke. Even Kekashi had to admit that Naruto surpassed him some time ago. The place was starting to get dark as they were passing through a nearby town in the Fire Nation. I guess we should stop for the night. As they stop in front of a hotel. Wow. This place looked fancy. Said Tintin as she glanced up as he stopped in front of a five star hotel. You think so? Said Naruto. Of course. I mean just look at it. As they saw the people entering. 
And she even felt a bit self-conscious. There was people in some elegant clothing. Are we really gonna stay here for the night? As Sakura, she glanced over toward the others. Maybe they should indeed treat themselves after all. They just completed a successful mission. Don't worry, said Naruto. I'll take care of it. As nature is I brown. What do you mean you'll take care of it, he said to Naruto, confused by his statement. As the group followed behind him, Naruto, said Sakura as they made their way. Stepping inside, the doorman saw Naruto as he opened the door with a smile, and he also bowed his head. Now that confused the members. While they were not dressed badly, they were in ninja clothing. However, as Naruto made his way, they saw a man in a well-dressed suit rushed over to them. Ah, Naruto-sama, he said. I had no idea that you were stepping in today. Well, I was just passing by back to the village, and the night kind of catch up on us. Oh, I see. Well, let me show you and your friends the same hospital that we show all of our people here. As he snapped his hand calling over, one of the people book some rooms immediately, he said. As Sakura is arguing at this guy's way of acting as Naruto seemed to just trail off. They looked towards one another. Is he gonna pay? Said Tenten as she saw him just walked off. As he did say that he would take care of it. Why would he? The man in the business suit said. Why not? Asked Nature as he looked towards the man. You lot don't know? What do you mean? Said Lee. Confused by the statement. Oh, said Kakashi. He did hear something about this a long time ago. I see one of you does know. What is he talking about, Kakashi Sensei? It seems that Naruto owned this place. Inu eyes went wide. So did everyone else. He he does? Yes. And quite a lot more. W what? The members were shocked. Now they look as they saw people greeting Naruto from all sides, bowing their heads respectfully. He he owned this place, Sakura said in shock. Now that was surprising to all of them. Time skip. Each of the members were given a room for themselves. The place was large enough to accommodate them without having to worry about not having room for any other guests that might came to pay. As it was wonderful, five star treatment. It was a rather relaxing scenery. As they got prepared meals, they had to pick what they want, and there was a lot, lot of options. There was even the sauna, indoor pool, everything was just so beyond amazing. And Naruto owned this entire place, and the man said much more. Naruto wasn't only just strong, well, he was thinking far ahead of many other people after all. They were the same age as him, and they didn't own a hotel. It made them realize just how mature Naruto was, to an extra degree. Later that night, there was a knock. As Naruto opened the door to his room, standing there was Ino looking rather self-conscious as she could not meet his gaze. C can we talk, she said, her gaze looking down. As Naruto stepped inside, she stepped inside. As she walked over and stopped. You barely enjoy any of the accommodations, said Naruto. As she didn't take part in the sun or anything. Or the spa. It doesn't feel right taking anything from you, she said. Why not? Don't you hate me, she asks. As she turned to face him. Because if you don't, that meant I was just thinking into things. And you never really liked me in the first place. And why would you say that? I broke things off before they can even start. I... I acted so childish. I didn't give you a reason. I just broke things off like... Well, you mean nothing to me. And I thought... Well... You don't seem to hate me once you came back. So that meant I was just thinking to things. And what happened back then didn't really mean... Much to you. So... I have to hate you in order to have loved you, he said. Eno froze. L love That was not what she was expecting. We are not children anymore. 
and holding up certain feelings would not be a good things being petty and being out of spite and jealousy well I don't condone such things but no I don't hate you even after all I did you never gave me explanation there was many times I thought about several reasons but I couldn't really come up with one without actually knowing I guess I owe you that I know that you're gonna probably laugh at this but what can I say I felt insecure I felt like I was not good enough I mean you're Naruto Uzumaki even at such a young age you were completely far out of our league you were just on a league of your own but not just that you're the son of the fort Hokage you have his famous Hiroshin your name is all over the world your ass ranked ninja in the bingo book and who was I? Ino Yamanaka I just recently started gaining a bit of name on mine as the student of Sanada Senju but even then it still doesn't add up it's not that I'm jealous it's just I felt I would be holding you back I mean what would the world think if someone as extraordinary as you don't have someone as extraordinary by their side and I guess I didn't feel right being there if I could not lift you up for the better if I was pulling you back I would hate myself for doing that you were always so much more advanced than what I thought I had felt great feelings for you back then however I didn't even know what I was getting myself into I was just a dumb stupid kid I mean you have a hotel for Christ's sake you're our age and yet you're just so advanced about your life but I didn't think of any of these things I was just a stupid girls crushing on boys and all that I wasn't ready to grow up yet even though I'm not sure that I'm even ready to grow up yet even though I know as most would say an adult I guess I just felt like I was not good enough for you and rather than drag you down it's best if I just remove myself from the equation but I feel horrible in the way I did what I did I might say that you deserve to hate me but in truth I don't want you to hate me I actually want to just be your friend I know that what I did can't be just solved like that easily so instead I just want to start this out as a friendship for us to get along after all before any of this happened before we even started talk about anything like this you and I were such good friends and you taught me you helped me in all of the ninja arts and what can I say I was grateful but now that's just well gone everything is just so awkward so I guess that is what I feel to tell you back then I was just so afraid so yeah I guess that's what I want to say so can we return back to being friends at least she said in a pleading tone as Naruto stepped forward I have never hate you Eno he said yes I would like to be friends he said and you're right it has been a bit awkward he said and she smiled at that as she hugged him thank you she whispered as they broke apart well I guess I'll see you tomorrow she said yeah see you tomorrow as she left Naruto sat down on the bed as he just sat there looking out at space not really thinking about anything his mind being blank it was incredibly hard on him reason being she was the first one for him to actually love she was the one that made him understand what that even meant a part of him kind of understand why she acted that way as it was hard on her he understand that and it's not like she did it out of spite to hurt him or anything she was just confused however he was also confused but he could sum that all up rather quickly they were humans humans made mistake and they were not gods while his dream was to become like the gods themselves he had not yet reached a level of divinity that he could say that he was all knowing and all seeing but Ina was right things between them had been rather awkward 
and you would like things to just return back to normal. However, as a relationship, he wasn't so sure. Time skip. Pain was angry. No, he was livid. A god should not be angry because when they are, they were wrathful. The rain was coming down hard as Conan stood behind him. The reason why he was so pissed off was because of the death of Sasu and well, Deidre. The reason being, the two of them were vital to the organization. Sasu Network, his spy network was large. It was where they gathered most of their information. And not to mention Deidre had the ear. Versatility. His birds were a great addition to the organization. And with him out there with Sasu, they could move rather fast and gather a lot of information. And things that they should know, they would not know now. Because both members were dead. And not to mention their rings were completely obliterated. As he could not sense the chakra pulse that he sent to them at all. And that pissed him off rather greatly. Zetsu was not able to get in close contact with. The battle that took place, it was just too destructive. And Zetsu had the feeling that the Uzumaki would be able to sense him if he got too close. After training for so long with Joy of the Sonin, who is renowned for being a sage, there was no possible thought that the Uzumaki has not become a sage by now. If that was the case, he would be able to harness Sage Talker. And that would be bad if he found Zetsu. Zetsu was a spy, not a fighting type. However, Pain was greatly pissed off at this, as things were not going the way that he liked at all. As he had just had a meeting with the organization, he would be the one to be going after Naruto himself, as he would bring the full wrath of Pain, the full wrath of a god down upon him. Let's see if he survived that. Meanwhile, that was going on. Itachi Uchiha had proven himself to be the trickiest person in the elemental nation as he played the path of the criminal rather well. However, his organization was getting a bit antsy, especially the leader. None of the members of Kanuha are the ones that he was going after knew what leader contained or the amount of power he possessed. Of course, Itachi knew about the Renegon, but Naruto, Jiren, none of them knew about this. Itachi had kept himself as the perfect villain for the past few years. However, he didn't like the situations that were going on right now. He was sure if Naruto was within Kanuha at the time that his brother tried to leave. His brother wouldn't have left, however, he was afraid that Naruto might have killed him. Itachi knew Naruto's philosophy very well. He hated traitors and people that go against Kanuha. And with how strong he's gotten, Itachi doubted that Sasuke would have even survived back then, much less now. So that was something that concerned him. He didn't want Sasuke to die. However, he didn't want Kanoha to get destroyed either. That was the whole entire reason why he risked his life. There was a whole entire reason why. He sacrificed everything to protect the village and his brother. And he wouldn't allow either of them to be destroyed. He had to make a move. Sooner than later. Meanwhile that was going on. Jerry received a note from one of his spies. The information passed straight from several other spies moving through. The elemental nation. He was a distance away from said location, however, the information that he got was a real good piece of information that the village need to know immediately. As Jerry went to hand says he summoned a toad, said toad made it way back to the village. Sometime earlier, Snelly was quite happy when she saw the team return, and not one of them injured or possibly worse dead, so that was a good thing. She knew that Naruto had gotten stronger, however, to hear that he demolished two S-rank ninjas by himself, that just goes to show how much stronger he has gotten. And she also wanted to work out things with Eno, and it seems that they were worked out because they were talking. And that made her happy, more than happy, it made her delightful. And she just wanted to be happy. As things were going good, it was then that Naruto received a message as he was now standing in front of her. Snelly looked over and said file. So this is our description. Yes. We have limited time on this. And I need to go now. You want me to send you alone? Look Naruto, I'm not questioning your skills, however. Orochimaru is a tricky individual. But, said Naruto, for all we know. 
that Orichimaru is not even there. From what Jure has gotten back is that she's traveling with a young child. And from the few hours of watching it seems like she's rather protective of him. Given my reputation I doubt she would actually want to fight me. And with me alone there she can't use anyone else as a hostage against me. So allow me to go. I will get her back here. And we can finally get the information on where Urchimaru resides. Jure a spy in the land of sound is unable to get too close to Urchimaru. However, this woman Gurin, it seems like she's probably taking the spot of Kabuto. Kabuto? You mean a traitor? Yes. I snather remember that bastard who had used her hemophobia against her all those years ago. But Naruto had ended his life. However, this Gurin seemed to have taken his spot. And Naruto had a marker across most of the elemental nation. And his marker would take him close to the location that she was. And they didn't have much time to waste. As she had been spotted by one of Jiraiya's spies. Jiraiya also had people in the sound. However, his spies in the sound could not get too close without being killed. As Uruchimaru only had a tight, a tight handful of people that he truly trusted to be there and not spread information. While the man knew that they fear him, that was the thing, they feared him. And some of them might be bought out. And Uruchimaru was not a kind person to forgive as he would slaughter them. So he couldn't allow anyone to be out of his inner circle. Gorin was someone that was ridiculously close to him because she knew a lot. And not to mention she became his right hand after Kabuta died. So if they were able to capture her, that would be good. Snathy had no doubts about Naruto's skills. He had already defeated Jare, who has been on his own for a long while out there now. Alright, she said. But be careful. And if you need backup, send word immediately. Are you all packed? She asked. A slight smile came on Ruta's face. Why are you smiling? She said. It's nothing, he said. Come on, tell me, she said to him. As he just smiled all of a sudden. And he was not one to just smile like that. Well, you're more like a mother instead of a Hokage right now, he said. Asking me if I'm packing all. That brought a smile to her face as well. Well, we are family, she said to him. Don't worry, said Naruto. I'll be just fine. I still have not completed the other mission that I chose for myself. You mean bringing back Sasuke? No. Killing her tomorrow, said Naruto. See ya. And with that, he was gone in a flash. Snethe sighed as she knew that he had taken upon himself to get revenge. For Sensei. He wanted to kill Urchimaru for what he did to Saratobi. And she had no doubt that Naruto possessed the power to put Urchimaru down once and for all. However, they had to know exactly where he was and make a strategic strike. She didn't want Naruto going into anything blind. After all, even if he might not be stronger than Naruto right now, Urchimaru was indeed tricky and crafty. Meanwhile, that was going on. Gorin was transporting Yukimaru as she made her way. She had come to care about him a lot. However, she did not like the experiments that Urchimar was doing on him with those drugs. Orochimaru wanted power. More so he wanted to go after the Three Tails. And with Yukimaru linked to it, well, they were gonna use him and she didn't like that. But she couldn't question her lord. But she was always there to make sure that Yukimaru was fine eating properly. And not to mention not going too overboard. As she didn't want anything to happen to him. So far, nothing bad has happened. And he was getting prepared. She was transporting him towards the other base. As she had made sure to come herself to be his guide. She wouldn't put his life in any of those other incompetent fools. Even the Uchiha. As much as Urchimaru fanned over him. She hated the Uchiha. And she didn't trust him one bit. Not at all. However, she made her way through. With Yukimaru by her side as they moved. They had skipped through the town and they were now making their way down. There were trees on each side of them. Gurin felt something off. They were not in the vicinity of any nearby great nations. However, she felt like she was being watched. Yukimaru was oblivious of this, it seems. As he walked his hand on his head. As he took in nature. It was then that someone crash landed in front of them. As Gurin watched the smoke clear where she stood in front of Yukimaru. Her eyes went wide when she saw who it was. There he was in all of his glory. She knew exactly who he was, even though she had not met him face to face before. 
As Orochimaru Sama talk about him a lot, this was not someone that she should go up against at all. She was told that specifically. Damn it. She glanced towards Yukimaru who was behind her, not taking her eyes off the opponent for a second. Gurin. She froze. He, he knew her name? Damn it, this was bad. She couldn't allow him to hurt Yukimaru though. Who are you, she said, pretending to play the oblivious one. You have no guards, no supports, no one to help you. This is a fight that you cannot win. There are some questions that I would like you to answer. Come with me peacefully, and none of you shall get harm. Gurin, who is this said Yukimaru? As he was completely out of the loop, he was just a child after all. Gurin knew that if she was taken to Kanoha, she would have to betray her lord and if she did not, they would reach in her mind and tear the information from it. Something that she could not allow. Yukimaru, run she said. What? I said run. But Gurin, run now she yelled to him. As Yukimaru turned he ran. As he knew whenever Gurin shot like that she was serious. I won't let you touch him she said as blades of crystal form in her hand. As Nurta raised the iron at that as she launched several crystal blades towards him, she wasted no time as she went to Ansign. Jade Crystal Dragon, she said. Nurta leaped up in the air, however, the dragon. It changed trajectory as it went up after him. He kicked his foot out as he twists, a Rapsengan form as he shoved it right in the dragon's face. However, to his surprise, it did not break. Instead, he started to push back his technique. It was stronger than he thought. Wind Chalker started to mix with his Rasengan, as it started to carve right through the dragon until he tore the head clean off, only for Gurin to meet him in mid-air and deliver a brutal kick that knocked him out of the air. Naruto flipped as he landed, Gurin landed on her feet as well. Poof, a blade appeared in his hand. She extended the blade on both of her wrists. In the distraction she had created a crystal clone and sent it after Yukimaru. All she needed to do now was to get the hell out of here, as she knew that fighting him was a death sentence if he wanted to be. So she could not go up close. She launched those two blades towards him, as she saw him deflect them with his blade. However, that is what she was waiting on the time. Just a split second as she went through hand sign. Jade Crystal Spikes! She slammed her hand down as multiple crystal spikes erupted from the ground. She went through hand sign once again. Jade Crystal Prison. She pumped an obscene amount of chakra into this attack. The entire place started to rumble as a massive crystal wall entrapped Naruto right in the center. Yes, this was her chance. Gurin turned as she fled, moving as fast as possible. However, every single ear inside of her lungs was knocked out as her body was thrown. She smashed into her own crystal as it cracked with an obscene amount of force. As she slid down it, coughing up blood, Gurin was confused. Did he brought back up? She didn't sense anyone else. What the hell just hit her? Gurin looked up her eyes a bit glassy, unable to fully see what was going on. It was then that she realized it was him. Wait, how did he... As she then realized about his signature technique, but she didn't see him mark anything around here. He must have done it before. She sealed him off. She wasn't even thinking in her panic. And she wasted so much of her chakra on that nonsense, only for him just to escape that easily. Damn it. As she quickly rose up to her feet, still holding her stomach. I'd rather not kill you. So I suggest you stand down. You bastard. I won't stand down. You won't get any information from me. As she form, crystals charge over her arms. The crystal on her stomach reform. How could he be this strong? He was able to literally crack right through her crystal like it was nothing. Was his chakra really that dense? She moved in as she swinged her fists. However, he ducked underneath as she brought her leg up. A crystal shard formed right on her knee to stab right through his throat. 
but he tilted his head just in time, before he reached around and hooked her around the back of the neck. As he lifted her off the ground, Gurin brought her leg around as a crystal short form on the tip of her sandals. As it came down to pierce him, however, he spun with her, causing her body to twirl as her entire mind spin out of focus. She was then bashed through a tree. As her head spun, she collapsed down on the ground as she slowly picked herself up by holding onto the breaking tree. As it collapsed, she looked around as she couldn't see him anywhere. Did he run away? It was then that she sensed it behind her. She flashed through hand sign and she charged. A rather large amount of chakra once again. Jade crystal minefield, she said. The pink crystal erupted from her as they tore through the entire forest where he was. Nurta saw the onslaught of crystal coming towards him. Before he slammed his hand together, Gorin's eyes widened as she felt. The amount of chakra that eclipsed her own being released. Wind style. That was all she heard before it came. Her crystals were blown apart. Her body was thrown and this time she indeed broke. Right through her crystal spear as she broke it through. The entire thing collapsed on the other side. As her body crashed in a groan. She coughed up more blood. Cuts all along her body. What the hell just happened? How could she be so easily defeated? She was Uruchimar number 2. A elite of the elite. And yet she was tossed aside like she was nothing. She always knew that he was strong but this was just an embarrassment. Well at least. Yukimar got away. And if they wanted any information from her. They were gonna have to kill her. Gurren. Gurren eyes went wide when she heard that voice. No. It, it can't be. As Gorin turned to see Yukimar struggling in mid-ear, the back of his shirt being held up by none other than Naruto. Her Jade Crystal clones weren't like Shadow clones. She did not receive the memory. So she wasn't aware that it dispelled. You bastard. How dare you. He chopped Yukimar in the back of the neck as a child passed out over his arms. You're gonna pay, she said. But before she could even move, chains wrapped her on her limbs before they slammed her into the ground, holding her tight. Gurin felt her chakra being subdued and being restrained. As Nurta calmly walked towards her, You should have listened to me and given up. I wouldn't have to put you in this state, he said to her. As Gurin passed out, as she was unable to even move anymore, Time skip. Aruchimar sat down in his throne. Gorin should have been back by now. Something was wrong. Something was definitely wrong and he knew. Gorin was one to always be on time no matter what. She was always here. Always making that effort to be on time. But now she was not here. Even as the time ticked by. It didn't look like she was coming in time soon otherwise. His other flunkies would have reported back to him. That Gurin was coming however, so far nothing. He wondered if she was having some problem out there. As he wondered if she ran into any trouble. As he was starting to get upset. Gurin had become his right hand after Kabuta's death. Someone that he relied on. Because he was not in the right state at the moment. His time was coming very soon and he was sick. And he needed someone there. And as much as he helped Sasuke, he did not completely trust Sasuke to not poison him. Aruchimaru only trust a couple of people. He was paranoid, yes, but that is how he had survived for this long. Being paranoid was a good thing sometimes. And now Gurin was not here. A frown came on his face, angered by the whole situation. Where the hell could she be? Time skip. Gurin woke up with a groan. As she was confused, what was going on? Where was she? Her mind was hard to remember the last thing that she did. All of it came rushing back to her though, in a quick instant, as everything rushed back to her mind. 
She remembered all, as it felt like it hit her like a train. The fight. Gurin tried to move, however, she found that she could not. Her hands were restrained. As she saw shackles, she was lying on some kind of bed. As she looked around, she had no idea where she was. She saw Boris in front of her. That bastard must have captured her. She couldn't feel her chakra, it was probably sealed off. Damn it. Her mind rushed towards Yukimara, she wondered where he was. She remembered seeing him before she passed out. Meanwhile, that was going on. You know that this is my job, right? Said Ibiki as he looked towards Naruto. Yes. But I just need 10 minutes. That's all I'm asking. Kid, she's a subordinate of Orochimaru. I don't think that 10 minutes would be enough to break someone like her. However, I will get the job done. Well, that means it doesn't matter if I get 10 minutes or not. No do it, said Naruto. Well, I guess you're right, said Ibiki. Well, then have at it. Just don't kill her. Of course not, said Naruto. I wouldn't want to step over your field, he said. As Ibiki nodded, he didn't know what the kid think he could do in 10 minutes. Wow. He respected Naruto because of his skills and strength, and as a person as well. He wasn't really an interrogator. Meanwhile, Gorin had realized her situation, but she wasn't going to talk. But she was also worried about Yukimaru. Where was he? What were they doing to him? These people were Kanoha ninjas. They wouldn't hurt a child, now would they? However, the world. People can be deceiving, people can be liars. And that is what she feared the most. Kanoha ninjas can be some of the most ruthless people, but they pretend to be good people. So that caused her to worry a lot about Yukimaru. However, she heard it. They're finally awake. Her eyes open up to focus on the individual standing there. You bastard, she said as she got to her feet. However, she found that she couldn't reach him. You're lucky that these bars are in my... She was cut off as he opened his cell and stepped right in. Gorin found herself at a disadvantage now. She wasn't as strong before to face him and now she couldn't feel her chakra. Well, that was bad. Really, really bad. He had this look in his eyes. This cold, unfeeling, unattached look that actually scared the hell out of her. Aruchimar had a dangerous gaze but this guy. It seems like he would just snap her neck at any moment without even battering the eye. He leaned against the bars as she clenched her fists. Realizing her predicament, she was not at a good advantage. She had lost before what made this even worse that she was now chained up. You think you're going to break me, she said. Well, you can't. I am one of no. What do you mean, no? I'm not here for your bullshit or your nonsense. Tell me where Urchumar is immediately. Huh. <laughs> it seems like you don't understand how this works. Well, let me let you understand. I'm not gonna say shit. You think I have to touch you to get what I want, said Naruto. Do your worst. That child. You care for him, do you not? I care for no one, she said. Don't you know that us, Aruchumar loyalists, are nothing but cold, unforgiving bastards? Yes, I've heard that before. So you wouldn't mind if I were to snap his neck I mean that wouldn't really affect you now would it Gurin started to panic what the hell was he saying of course not she said trying to keep a nonchalant act about it why would I care ah you wouldn't as he started to walk away wait where the hell are you going she said didn't I just told you I'm going to kill that child what? You're bluffing. Bluffing? Excuse me, but do you know me, Naruto Axe? Yeah. You're a Kanoha ninja. A tree hugger. You guys don't do that thing. Huh. For an Urchimaru follower, you're rather stupid. As Naruto started to walk away. Wait! Don't you dare hurt him. 
or I'll make you suffer. Luther appeared in front of her as she stepped back in fright. How? He said. You're all chained up. He reached out and gripped her throat. Gurin started to stifle as he lifted her off the ground one hand. Now, tell me. As he brought her close to his ears, how are you going to make me suffer? I can kill you right here and now without battering an eye. You think your life means nothing to me. I know that you're not a good person. In fact, you're the worst of the worst. You're a despicable piece of human garbage who enjoys seeing people suffer after all. Those that work for Urchmar always have the same attitude. Now tell me, how exactly are you going to make me suffer? All the colors started to drain away from her face. As her eyes started to close until he dropped her, Gorin took in deep, deep breaths. Finally able to breathe. You, you almost killed me. That's the same thing I'll do to the child. But I'm also going to make sure that he knows as he's suffering that you're the one who refused to tell me anything. So he has to die. As Naruto turned to walk away, Gurin bit her lip. She didn't want Yukimaru to suffer. No, they were just saying this. He wasn't going to kill Yukimaru. He was just a kid. Konoha ninjas did not do these things. However, she remembered him squeezing life out of her. Those look in his eyes. He did not care. He was a monster. Wait, please, don't. I'll... I'll... Gurin bit her lip, her mind struggling to... Chose... She had come to care for Yukimaru so much. She was the one that took his mother away from him. And if he were to die like this, without her doing anything, but on the other hand, Urchimaru Sama, she couldn't betray him like that. As she started to scratch at her cheek, so much so that she started to cut herself with her nails. As her mind was unable to choose one or the other. What? said Naruto. I'll tell you where he is. As she took a deep breath and released it hard like it was effort for her to say those words I'll tell you everything you need to know just please don't hurt him you can do whatever you like to me just don't kill him he doesn't deserve this as she knew that she was the one that took away his childhood and she would be the one to take away his life just don't kill him I don't believe you w what you're a subordinate of Urchimaru you're nothing but a lion, piece of scum. Why should I believe a word that you say? Because I'm his number two. And, said Naruto. I, I know where he is. I know what you want. You want the Uchiha, don't you? Let's make a deal. And what deal would that be? Well, I want to talk to someone much higher than you. After all, you can't give me what I want. Oh, but I can, said Naruto. Now tell me, what would you like? I would like no harm to fall on me or Yukimaru. We have not done anything to you leaf ninjas. So I just want to be let go. Once you ki- As she paused. Once I what? Once you- Defeat Lord Urchimaru, she said. The words coming out painfully. As she was struggling between her loyalty and protecting the child. It seems that she truly cared for him. However, Naruto knew how to shut off his emotions quite well and become dark in the span of a split second and it was working rather greatly. And the girl cared too much about the boy to let him just die like that. And that was a good thing. Gurin knew that she probably deserved death after all. She is hurt and tortured so much people that she laughed while doing it. However, Yukimar did not deserve that. I'll tell you everything that you need to know. As long as we're safe and once everything is safe out there for us, you let me and Yukimar go. So you just want to be free? Yes. I need some kind of insurance because I don't trust you one bit. You're a monster, she said. As he simply smiled, he didn't take it as an offense. As he stepped towards her. Gorin started back away until she fell on the bed. As she looked deeply into his eyes, she could not look away from them. They were almost hypnotic. Gorin, he said. Look in his eyes was one of death. If you lie to me and send me on some wild goose chase, 
if your information does not regard anything close to Earth Marasovsky, when I return, I will kill you. Gorin felt shivers run down her spine. You, you have to go now then, she said. As notary's Aaron, he will know that I'm gone for some time. And Aruchmar's rather paranoid, so he would make a move and leave that base. And then I won't know where he is. So you have to go soon. As he backed away, once he did, she was finally able to swallow. She did not know what it was, but being in the close vicinity of this person brought her such fear that she couldn't stop her hands from shaking. She's never been around someone with such an oppressive aura before. And just look in his eyes, it made her tremble. This small little video camera that was watching the entire exchange was linked back towards Anko and Ibiki. Ibiki was standing there shocked. Well shit, the kid does know how to get results. Well, he shouldn't be surprised. He was a former Anfu member. Ibiki turned his head as he turned to see Anko. As there was this look on her face, he watched as she licked her lips. In a rather seductive, suggesting way, as she was staring at the screen, most likely staring at Naruto. It seems the kid is now in trouble from within the own confines of his village now. Meanwhile, Sasuke found himself running for his life. As he looked behind him, he saw nothing. He turned as he saw nothing until, I warned you, the voice composed and swallow everything. If you betray this village, I would hunt you down and take your life. Sasuke turned as his throat was grabbed. The next thing he knew, he saw Naruto standing there. As Naruto blade was curved and right in the center of his forehead. No, don't Sasuke felt agonizing pain as the blade slipped right through his skull. As he screamed in pain, the only thing he saw was Naruto cold, unfeeling eyes pushing the blade further. Sasuke leaped out of bed. What the hell? That was a dream. Cold sweat was all over his face. He was gripping the bed so tightly he had torn into it with his fingers. That was just a dream, however his heart was beating so hard, as his hands were even shaking a bit. As he remembered the warning that Naruto gave him, and no doubt the blonde would be out to kill him. However, he had prepared himself and trained for this, and he would fight. He was not going to be taken down that easily. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see the next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as he posted. Bye, I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.